The aft galley served regular meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The forward galley was open 23 hours a day and served more of a fast food menu. You can see that the Navy is very concerned about calories and carbohydrates, so that's listed here. But the crew could have all the food they wanted. For instance, very important to us was a good breakfast, and a statistic might be 900 dozen eggs, 600 gallons of milk, 10 tons of food a day, 13,000 meals served on Midway. Remember, we had 4,300 young people between the ages of 18 and 25. These are the steam kettles that were used to cook a lot of the food on Midway, and they didn't have a gauge on these. They would determine whether it was done or not by the sound of the steam. Moving further along in the aft galley, we have, of course, the deep fat fryers for all of the food that the sailors loved. And then we have all of the convection ovens and normal ovens to cook the food. All of the power in the galleys were all steam and electric, no flame allowed. Back this way, we had griddles to cook food on the open uh, griddle, and these would be used to serve the crewmen as they came down the line, both the port line and the starboard line, mess line. As we leave the galley, we're going to proceed on the tour into officer's country. One of the first stops along the way in officer's country on the second deck tour is the USS Midway Chapel. The stained glass left the Midway when she was decommissioned in early 1992 and went on to the Independence and then later on to the USS Kitty Hawk. And when she went out of commission, the stained glass returned home to Midway and here she sits today. This is the executive officer's desk and uh, he had room in here for uh, meeting people as well as department heads. If you follow me this way, we're going to go into his stateroom. His stateroom is one of the three staterooms on the ship that has a bed that you can totally walk around. Moving further aft, you can see that he had his own yeoman staff and all of his own office equipment and communications equipment. And this is the formal wardroom of the USS Midway, and as you'll see, we have a more informal wardroom, more to the aft. The keynote on this wardroom was you had to wear the uniform of the day to be able to eat here. Here we are now in what we call the dirty shirt wardroom. This wardroom was used by all the officers on USS Midway. The one piece that's interesting is they could come here not in the uniform of the day. For instance, the air wing and their pilots and crew could come here in their flight suits. The other folks working on the flight deck or around the ship may be wearing a sweatshirt of a different color. That would not be the uniform of the day, but certainly the uniform of the day on the flight deck. They were certainly welcome here to eat their food. As we leave the dirty shirt wardroom, we'll progress past the officer's barber shop on the ship. A simple uh, method was to sign your name up on the sheet and appear for your appointment. Well, here we are now in the laundry, the main laundry of Midway. As you can imagine, with 4,300 members in the crew, the laundry was a very busy place. All of the laundry services, of course, were free. We're in the aft section of the ship, right over the screws. So not only was it very warm, very humid, but it was also very noisy, and there was a constant vibration from the screws as we moved through the water. During general quarters, all of the medical personnel would be dispersed throughout the mess decks to the wardroom and other locations to begin to treat any kind of wounded situation that we had and then triage them down to the medical spaces. This is the chief petty officer's mess. The food was paid for by the Navy, but they would go ashore and buy lobster tails, as you'll see, and have some really special meals. The interesting thing about the chief's mess is it was a privilege to be invited down here. Officers couldn't come down here unless they were invited by a chief. In the chief's mess, there's a special cubicle. It's called the POW and MIA table. This table is a place of honor. It's solitary setting as a reminder that some of those who defend our country are no longer among us. This is the main post office on Midway, and as you know, Midway was put into service in 1945 and went out early 1992, 47 years of service. During that time, letters were very, very important to crew members. 
Today's Navy, of course, has Skype and Internet and all kinds of connections. But in Midway's day, we relied on the post office. So much so that this was the central post office for the immediate fleet around the Midway. All of the ships that accompanied Midway, their mail would come here also, and we would helo it out or highline it out when we did underway replenishments to the other ships. So everybody depended on Midway's post office for their mail. Here we are back up on the hangar deck. That concludes our second deck tour. Thanks for watching.